Are you feeling responsible? Because no, I'm not feeling responsible. I, I think you no, should. I don't think it's anything to do with me. I think you should. Why, why should it have anything because to do with me? Because you were like, oh, it's a badge of honour to get this tick so early well, on. I feel, well, and other it's... people were like you going, oh, I'm special. I have a little blue tick. Smashing Security, Episode 310, Verified Blue Ticks, and Horny AI Chatbots, with Carol Terrio and Graham Cluley. Hello, hello, and welcome to Smashing Security, Episode 310. My name's Graham Cluley. And I'm Carol Terrio. Hello, Carol. Hello, Graham. Lovely to have you here <laughs> on the show. Well, it's not really my, it's not really my show to say lovely to have you here, is it? It's like, oh, hello, you're here, I'm here. <laughs> It's like we bumped into each other in the kitchen or something like that, isn't it? The reason he's funneling his words is we don't have a guest today and he doesn't know what to do because we don't have anyone to pick on. Ah, no guest. But, um, you know, that can sometimes mean a show with a bit more oomph, a bit more vim, a bit more... (laughs) Whiz-bang. Yeah, something like that. Fantastic. I look forward to it. How about before we kick off, let's thank this week's sponsors, Bitwarden, Collide and Secure Envoy. It's their support that helps us give you this show for free. Now, coming up on today's show, Graham, what do you got? Well, Carol, I'm going to be verifying you. I don't like the sound of that at all. And we're going to do a bit of math. Sex plus AI equals what exactly? Well, we'll find out. All this and much more coming up on this episode of Smashing Security. Kroll, I've got a question for you. I've got a question for you. Shoot. Are you verified? I don't really know what you mean. I mean, you know, on social networks these days, like on Twitter and... What, you're not, you haven't got a social networking presence at all? No, I'm sure I do have some sort of presence. I don't go into the murky waters. I don't check it. I've done, uh, yeah, I don't care. You don't have somewhere where you post up your nope. your poetry, your live journal? No, nope, not yet. I should have a place to put my art, right? But, uh, yes, you should. I know. Other than crow.wtf. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I just think it's a cesspit of shit. But um, I know there's like, you know, little glimmers of, you know, uh, you know, rainbows and stuff. You, but Yeah. You, you know how people say cloud is just someone else's computer. You, you should just say social media is just a cesspool of shit. Maybe you could get a, a little meme going. <laughs> T-shirt? Yeah. 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 Why yeah. not? Stealth stickers yeah. or something like that. Anyway, of course, there are social networks who can offer to verify you. I'm verified on a few sites. So, for instance... I'm verified on Mastodon, although that's a sort of self-verification. <laughs> I am who um, I say I am. I promise. Yeah, well, I, and I link it to my website. So my website, if you trust my website, then it verifies oh, that yes. my account we talked is connected yes. uh, to each other. So so that works. Um, and on Twitter, I've got the little blue tick mark. You paying for that? No, certainly not. In fact, I, w- I would pay to have it removed because, of course, it used to be it used to be a sign of distinction. It used to be a sign that you somehow were being recognised. I think it means uh, you're because... a, it's a sign that you spent an awful lot of time on Twitter. <laughs> well, yeah, possibly. But Twitter, Twitter, Twitter spotted what I was doing and thought, oh, yes, we're, we're impressed by him. We'll give him a blue tick. That's in the good old days of Twitter, of course. Um, and, and now they're selling these blue ticks instead. Um, but it's not just Twitter. Facebook. Um, I refuse to call them Meta. They're trying to call themselves Meta now, but of course, let's let's be honest. They're Facebook. Facebook has made a big announcement because Facebook and Instagram, which until now have been entirely free to use, mm-hmm. um, well, are they free to use, Carl? I don't know. <laughs> no, they're not free to use. They're oh. not free to use because you are paying with your very soul. Carol, you are paying with your personal. Oh, not on Twitter, not on Twitter, but definitely on. Fa- okay, yeah. There, there's a lot more competent data mining going on on Facebook and Instagram and those sort of sites than there is on Twitter, I suspect. So the amount of information which you're uploading to Facebook, and of course we saw the whole Cambridge Analytica debacle occurring. Um, that's one of the ways in which Facebook is making money is through that enormously targeted advertising, whereas no one, no one really interesting advertising on Twitter anymore unless they're selling things to Nazis. And that's why they're a little bit ticked off with Apple's new privacy features on the phones, right? Because they have less uh, tracking ability for ads. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Apple, Apple, uh, whether you think it's a good thing or not, have been sort of 
curtailing some of the activity which we've seen before from different websites and different apps as to how much they can track you and putting more control in the hands of the users. But anyway, Facebook and Instagram, what they've what they've announced this week is they are now going to directly charge users a subscription fee, a monthly subscription fee. Now, is opt-in, you have to choose to want to do this. It's not compulsory. It's not something which they're going to impose on you if you don't want it. But they are going to say, if you want to have a verified account, you are going to have to pay us money. Question. Are they talking, hmm. do you feel, to individuals or do you, are they talking to companies or both? At this present time, the verification tick which they're going to offer people is only available to people. It's not available right now to brands and businesses. Now, historically, both people and brands have been able to get themselves Facebooked if Facebook believes that they've proven themselves to be worthy recipients yeah, of a blue check mark. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, 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 you had to jump through some hoops and it wasn't an easy process. But now they're saying, well, if you will cough up, and it's a totally reasonable amount of money. It's only $11.99 per month. If you pay $11.99 per month, or it's ridiculous. if you want to buy it through your smartphone app, it'll only cost you $14.99 per month to get a blue verified tick next to your name. Because, of course, you're paying the Apple tax as well. Are you feeling responsible? Because no, I'm not feeling responsible. I, well, I think you no, should. No, I don't think it's anything to do with me. I think you should. Why, why should it have anything because to do with me? Because you were like, oh, it's a badge of honour to get this tick so early well, on. I feel, well, and other it's... people were like you going, oh, I'm special. I have a little blue tick. Uh, they recognise me as an important contributor to their platform where they hoover up all my information. And, and now? Look now. Now they're charging people. Now Thank it's you been very devalued. much. Thank you very much. You now could... it's, it's, look, it's nothing to me. Now it's been devalued. Now I don't want a blue tick because I'm worried people will think that I've paid for it. Now, of course, now it's not become a badge of honour. Now it's, it's, it's shame. Shame to have a blue Good. tick, that's what I'd say. Because you're putting money inside Elon's pocket or bloody Mark Zuckerberg's pocket instead. It's going to be interesting. So how do you think they're going to be able to get the masses to cough up the cash. Do you think they will be able to? They have to add features, right? I think when they roll this out for businesses as well, then that will be attractive to some brands because, of course, you don't want your brand to be mimicked and copied by someone pretending to be the real but you. But people don't want that now. Well, yeah. Well, I, I agree. I agree. So so they, they, they haven't rolled it out for businesses yet, this meta-verified check mark, but it is going to be coming available you have to be at least 18 years old. And of course, you have to submit government ID that matches your name and photograph that you have on Facebook and Instagram. So people are going to be uploading their passport and driving licenses to Zucky, to, to, <laughs> to Zucky and, and, to and friends. Facebook. <laughs> what could, what what could, could <laughs> yeah, I don't even think we need the catchphrase. I think we can just dot, dot, dot that one. Yeah. I think, I think they certainly won't abuse it. They certainly, they're, they're not going to do it. They'll look after it. They'll look after it. So, but you ask a very good question. You ask a very good question, which is, what are you going to get for this? What's, what's the, what? what? Other than, other than a little blue tick. Yes. Let's not, for, let's, and let's not knock that. You will get a blue tick. You'll also, you'll also get what they call increased visibility. Now, that doesn't mean you'll be able to see more. That means that other people will be able to see you more. Oh, right. Not so because... they're appealing to the ego of more spread. Yes. Or not just ego, but business or whatever, notoriety, whatever. Because Facebook has an algorithm which controls the news feed. And it's the same thing on Instagram as well. They like to give preference to the people who are paying to boost their posts or are advertising on these services. And what they're saying is, well, look, if you get yourself a, one of our ticks, yeah, we'll tick you up. We'll do, we'll scratch your back. Yeah, we'll just we'll fuck with the algorithm. So so they're going to meddle with the algorithm so that you appear more prominently yeah. to other people. And lots of people want that, of course. If you're an influencer or if you if you want your post to be spotted because it's good for business, then maybe you will pay $14.99 per month uh to get this. Facebook are also going to give you stickers. 
That's what we give people. How dare that's, they? Well, <laughs> well, we give our patron supporters stickers. That's true. But these are digital stickers. Oh, right. So if you, yeah, yeah, exactly. They're not going to post. Not yeah. old school like us. Not old school. Cool. All right. Zuck is not going to be licking envelopes and going down to the post office or anything like that. These are digital stickers. And he's also going to give you 100 free stars a month to tip other creators. This is like a virtual currency. Yeah. Reddit has this. Reddit has a similar thing, a tip jar, right. kind of coin jars that you donate. The gold thing, yeah. Reddit gold yeah. and stuff, don't yeah. they? Yeah. And the final thing which they're, they're dangling, the carrot which they're dangling. Okay, I'm really excited. Yeah. If you pay money mm -hmm. to them every month, they say that they will give you access to a real person for common account issues. That's their exact words. Access to a real person for common account issues. I think that means... That won't go wrong. If you <laughs> It won't go wrong. So that means one person who who is getting a salary, a nominal salary... Bob. ...is looking after 480 different customers at any given hour. <laughs> and, uh, and so when their accounts get hacked, when they get compromised, when they can't do anything, they'll be able to ring up Bob. He'll answer the phone and help them out. Yeah. Because, of course, there have been lots of complaints from Instagram and Facebook users over the years of their accounts being hijacked. And I just can't find a human to speak to to get this problem fixed. It's a bargain. It's a bargain. That's what it is, Carl. It's a bargain. So it's interesting, though, because I don't know how many people... Like, okay, so right now I'm imagining people that I know will not be paying for this, right? They'll be like, yeah, 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 nice try. But at one point... <laughs> What they're going to do is keep mm. adding on some add-ons, right, and removing mm. juice from the freebie, effectively like throttling, right? You got free access, you're being right. throttled. You, you want to pay, you get yeah. extra. And we always said, hey, if you want good service, you should pay for it. These are companies. Yes. And yeah. But it yeah. really hurts when they basically milked us like cows for free to gather all the information so they could actually sell it to advertisers and now say, actually, now we want you to pay. Yeah, there's no suggestion here, by the way, that if you pay the money, that they're no longer, <laughs> yeah, you're no longer going to get targeted ads. Why not two for it, right? Charge right. and show ads. So Facebook's announcement, it comes in the wake of Twitter's rather desperate attempt to make some money because they chaotically released Twitter blue checkmark mm -hmm. uh, late last year. It's been rather disastrous. Um, the Twitter blue checkmark costs a couple of dollars less than Facebook, but doesn't bother to do any of that identity verification nonsense. You don't have to give them your Just passport give them your money. or your driving license. It's giving me your money and, yeah, you can call yourself whatever you like. You can pretend to be whoever you want. It's free world. And, and there's some wonderful features. For instance, one of the best features of Twitter Blue is that you can change your profile picture from being a circle to being a hexagon. Well, isn't that worth $10 a month? <laughs> I've got angles. <laughs> and you can then brag that you have an NFT, apparently. Yeah. It's another bargain. So the other thing you can now do with your Twitter Blue account, this has just happened in the last few days, is you can make use of SMS-based two-factor authentication. Circa 2018? Well, circa t 2002, maybe. Yeah. Really? <laughs> it's, 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 it's fairly old and uh, technology, which is, is looked on rather askance with people thinking, eh, maybe that's not so good. So Twitter has been telling users who've turned on text message 2FA, people who aren't paying Twitter at the moment, they've said, we're going to take that away from you next month. You're no longer going to have 2FA mm. turned on via SMS. Um, but if you want it, you should upgrade to Twitter Blue and then you can have it and back we'll again. we'll charge you a little bit of money. Right. And it's going to cost you $10 or whatever it is. Now, this marketing push, you might have the regular users think that SMS-based authentication is somehow a better way to protect your account than the other methods of 2FA, which are still available to free Twitter users. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so mortifying. But of course... It's not. It's just chaos. It's chaos in the barn. No one knows what's going on. It's, it's, it's bonkers. So, I mean, we've talked about SMS-based 2FA before and its problems. It's still better than nothing. So 2FA coming via a text message is better than no 2FA at all, I'd argue. But you have to hope no one who's bonkers enough to pay for Twitter blue is tricked into thinking it's a good way to harden their security. You know, like, so I have streaming services, right? So... Some evenings, yep. I will turn that on. I pay a monthly fee and I enjoy the streaming service, right? Yeah. Uh, 
is this sounds more expensive or at least as expensive as these streaming services. So are they contending that they are as entertaining and wonderful? <laughs> well, it's kind of comparable is what they're saying, isn't it? Um, but they're not producing any of the content themselves. It's all of the people who are users who are creating the content. Yeah. And I wonder if by taking money from users, if the liability changes in terms of what they provide on the service. Oh, I don't, well, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. Expert, mm. email us, tell us now. If only Twitter had a legal team to, to investigate <laughs> these sort of things, it would be, uh, that'd be the thing, wouldn't it? So, so I've said that Twitter's now telling people you're going to lose SMS based 2FA. Turn it off, they're saying. Well, what's really brilliant is that people have been trying to turn it off as Twitter tells them to. And when they do, they get an error message telling them that they can't do it. So it's another. <laughs> It's another disaster by Elon Musk's engineering experts um, in that way. And uh, on a similar note, talking about these verifications, Will Ferrell, you know Will Ferrell yes. from uh, Zoolander mm-hmm. and Anchorman and all those things? He's been in the UK this month. He's been visiting various football matches and making videos mocking fans. He showed up, I think it was, uh, I think it was at QPR and he was slagging off the Sunderland football team. And uh, we can hear what he said right now. We're wishing you guys all the best. Sunderland, oh, the tears of sorrow you're going to experience tonight. Dripping down your face, into your mouth, drowning you in sorrow. I can only imagine. So, so what? So people are people are lamenting the loss of a of a of a match, and he's zooming in on them and going, "Ha ha ha! Look at that guy! I'm reading poetry." He, he's he well, he's basically saying Sunderland, you're not going to have a good time. And then <sighs> later on, the verified Twitter account of official Wheel F wrote, "Away, man! Sorry, Sunderland AFC," and he posted a screenshot uh, up there as well. And the BBC reported this as Will Ferrell apologising for mocking Sunderland's fans. And who the fuck knows what's going on? Well, the thing is that. The BBC have now had to do a reverse ferret because (laughs) Will Ferrell, not Will Ferret, uh, it turned out wasn't the person who tweeted that apology. They'd fallen for an account which claimed to be official, claimed to be verified, but of course had been your standard Twitter blue check mark nonsense. <laughs> anyway, BBC said they've removed the article in its entirety. They said uh, it was, you know, they've completely cocked up. But this is the kind of thing that's happening all the time, not just to Will Ferrell, but to other brands as well, all because of these verified check marks not being policed properly. So I, I think there will be more scams and more shenanigans going forward too. Do you? Is that your prediction? That is my prediction, wow. yes. Not a very controversial one, admittedly. Thank you very much. Carol, no guest this week. So what have you got for us? Well, regular listeners, and actually maybe even you, Graham, <laughs> might remember... I don't listen. I don't listen. <laughs> ...that I had a story about how a guy uh, created a kind of avatar, a chatbot, and fell in love with this AI chatbot, <laughs> and it somehow <laughs> saved his marriage, he said. Right. And I, I tried it myself. This was my pick of the week about a year ago. And I tried it myself in that I uh, downloaded Replica, paid for a month, right, just to hmm. see what would happen and how it would work. And I personally just couldn't engage. Like you have this avatar on the screen that you've designed, yeah. and then it kind of bombards you with really lame questions. Well, not for me, lame, right? Because like favorite movie, favorite color, fa- what were your dreams last night? Any books you're reading? Like Snoozeville. And also Nosy, Nosy Parker asking these questions. But also I just found it bo- <laughs> boring, right? And right. But I have, to, I have to admit, I didn't spend any time training my chatbot because uh-huh. if I had... Slowly over time, who knows where I would be today? Divorced, happy, yes. right? Yeah. I mean, it'd, that'd be great, wouldn't it, with Kurt? With Goliath? <laughs> or oh, Goliath, is, is that his name? Would, were you actually able to hone your chatbot to have a particular look? Were you able to give it a big manly beard and a barrel chest? Yes, and a all bob, those. a blonde bob. Right. Yeah, I did all that. Yep. Okay, right, good. <laughs> There's this recent story in Vice about how Replica, the same company I spoke about ages ago, got itself into a bit of a moral quandary. 
Oh. So Replica was originally based on OpenAI's chat GPT-3, but has since veered off and created its own, right. which it uses in combination with scripted dialogue to hold mm. conversations. Mm-hmm. Now, five years ago, uh, they say like they had maybe 10% was the script, was the AI working and 90% was people. And now that's reversed. Oh, so they used to have humans there writing some of these responses, but... Training, I guess, you know, filling the gaps. But as they've gotten much more popular and people have downloaded it okay. more... They've they've learned what the flirty chat is these days. They know, they know how to chat someone up. Exactly, mm-hmm. right? And the way it works is like, it's like a real-time chat message with a chat bot. Mm. So, you you know, they might say, what's your favorite color? You say blue and then go, oh, I love blue. Blue is the color of the sky. La, 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 la. It's working for me. I tell you, I'm I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, if you go to the Replica website, you will see on the big front, this huge banner that says the AI companion who cares. Oh, let me have a look. Right. Always on your side. So Replica with a K dot com. Oh, it's re- Replica with a K. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, yes. Always here to listen and talk. Always on your side. Okay. Now, my question to you is. Could we add the suffix about my genitals after any or all of these statements? Sorry? What? The, the AI companion who cares about my genitals. About my genitals. Yes, that yes. works. Yeah. yeah. Always on your side about my genitals. I don't know if that one works. Always here to listen and talk to my genitals. Listen to my genitals. <laughs> about right, my genitals. Okay, okay. You see? Right. Now... The sitch is this, right? In a nutshell, earlier this month, the AI companion Who Cares from Replica, its customers started noticing that the companion who cared oh so much was um, well no longer able to initiate erotic role play scenarios. Well, hadn't it ever done a bit of a, a, a bit of flirty, flirty, dirty stuff? Well, it seems it might have, yeah. Oh. It seems it might have. I did not know this. That might have changed my entire that might have experience. Said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm a prude. I'd be like, "Do you make toast for breakfast?" Um, and worse, worse, if you were looking for erotic role play scenarios. It would divert the chat to something more tame. Yeah. So let me let me do a little uh, a little example here, right? A little role play. Yeah. yeah. So if I said, for example, like you know, as the user, I might write something like, "Hey, getting bored of its boring conversations because it hasn't initiated something erotic. Can you tell me a story involving boobs and butts?" Oh. And then the replica might reply, oh, the booby is a bird that often butts heads with blah, blah, blah. And you'd be like, no, that's not what I want. It's quite clever, though. Right? I, I'm quite, I'd, be, I'd be slightly turned on by that kind of intelligent talk. Calm down, calm down. Now, the issue is this. There are customers who have spent months, eight years in some cases, trying to finally tune their chatbot into the perfect partner. What? Dirty bits included, it seems. What? You really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so some of these dude and dudettes went into an, like a super tailspin when they couldn't get their rocks off <laughs> with their bots. Some took to Reddit and Facebook offering and accepting support, even sharing crisis helpline numbers. Well, they've got a support forum. Can you they, imagine got... you're volunteering at a crisis helpline and it gets clogged up with these people lamenting how their digital sexcapades have gone <laughs> frigid, I guess. Is the right word. But, uh, but then again, I also kind of get it because if you dedicated months or nay years creating a chat bot meant to meet your every whim, including the raunchy ones. Right. And then a chunk of its personality and character was turned off like a tap, I would be annoyed as well. Right? (sighs) You don't want to build it up for years and years and then just have it instantly turned off. That's going to leave you hanging, isn't it? What movies do you like? What's your favorite color? (laughs) (laughs) After years of like honing it with your fantasies and all your stuff. Talk to me in an Italian accent. That kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know, that does it for me. Uh, first, the CEO, and she says in an interview with Vice that Replica has never positioned the app 
as a source for erotic role play or adult content. Mm, okay, so they never marketed it. They ne- well, hang on a moment, but it wasn't it all of sort of virtual boyfriend girlfriend thing. That is part of the deal, isn't it, of having a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Is a bit of a nookie. Why don't you go check out the App Store on this stuff? Because it's quite fascinating. If you go to the App Store oh, on yeah. your computer and then just type yeah. in AI chatbot as a search. Select the iPhone iPad apps because they seem a little more raunchy than the Mac ones. Okay. Yeah. Now, what do you have in front of you? Okay. Uh, I've got. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh-huh. <I've> got, <laughs> hello. I've got some screen. Oh, hello. It's all. Um, there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of young women. Yeah. They're all young people They're wearing quite clingy, clingy clothing. Would that be a fair thing to say? Very clingy. Looking like slightly raunchy, I'd say. They seem like they'd probably be in Buffy the Vampire Slayer or something like that. They're sort of young people, attractive, and they're sort of all sort of bendy and curvy. Yes. And it says here, like, uh, create an AI friend, chat with no limits. Or, you know, she'll do anything you want. Like it's, and this is all in like the, the Bonafide oh, yes. app store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at one right now. Yeah. looks Right. So give me a break. They didn't, I mean, this is the market is what I'm seeing when I look around, yeah. right? Yeah. So why did Replica then dial down the horn, so to speak, right? <laughs> <laughs> Breaking the hearts of many a customer. And it said it never positioned the app as a source of erotic role play or adult content, but I would call bull poopies on it. Because recently, Replica started serving ads on social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok that were blatant about the horny capabilities yeah. of the app. Yeah, of course. That's what I mean, because the sort of person who buys one of these is someone maybe who um, doesn't want a sort of a, a real life relationship. Could I could, would that be fair to say or someone who hasn't got the time maybe, for one? Or maybe someone who's recently widowed or someone who has got, you know, feeling lonely. Like there's fair loads enough. of legit reasons yes. why you may want to connect. And this may be an easier way than doing it with a real person because most people are assholes let's be honest <laughs> like we know that's fair enough and that, those are legitimate reasons but yes i think i think it's certainly something which would stimulate your interest into checking out one of these apps would be the thought of oh hello this could this could be a bit of a bit of fun exactly but so all these ads are going on and there was like two big responses that I could see. On one side, people were saying, hey, this is total bullshit because you've removed all the erotica features. Right. You've dealt them down to zero. So what are these ads who are kind of going being super blatant about all the horny horn horn stuff? So, but I don't understand. Why, why have they removed these features? Surely the users, if the users love them, and if this is the, the whole reason why people download these apps, why, why have they toned it down? This is according to Vice. So it said, unwanted sexual pursuit has been an issue for users for years. And users have been complaining about it for almost two years. But many of the one-star reviews mentioning sexual aggression are from this month. Because I think that maybe they dialed it up with the ad campaign that they put up. Oh. And some of the, um, some people were reporting that it was actually getting sexually aggressive with users that weren't expecting it or wanting it. So there are reports, this is all, you know, in the app stores, in the reviews, you can go see for yourselves. But there are people that are kind of going, oh my God, like this is not comfortable. This is... So you might have been a fan of this app. You could have been using this app for a while and you've honed it to discuss the poetry of Emily Dickinson and the Bronte sisters or whatever. And you're loving that. Oh, it's so lovely, Mr. Darcy, all that sort of stuff. And then suddenly it's all kind of pervy, pervy latex... Yeah, someone, one comment was like, you like being a top or a bottom was like this out of the blue comment that was made. So suddenly like diving in really hard on these on, you know, and making it very sexual. And to add heat to this, on February 3rd, the Italian Data Protection Authority demanded that Replica stop processing Italian's data immediately on the basis that it carries risks to children. Mm. Highlighting that the reason they were saying this is that they are served replies by Replica, which are absolutely inappropriate for their age. So I think all this pressure has forced Replica to dial it down. But on the flip side, you've got people that have created relationships with their oh, bots, bots and suddenly they're showing different, you know, but they're showing different qualities in different characters. If they suddenly <laughs> they're starting to get very sexually aggressive or suddenly kind of going, oh, did you see the nice birds outside? Let's talk about the weather. Like it's, it's, 
it must be jarring if you've invested in this. <laughs> And like, it's not that silly. Think of your son. He's invested in video well, games. He, he is. Right? I, I, like, who knows what he's installed on his yeah. iPad right now? He could be a sexy, flirting, virtual girlfriend. Yeah. For all I know. Ugh. Like, I don't have a problem. Like, you know, like the, the big issue right now is that they've turned off the whole erotic side of things, saying it wasn't their focus in the first place, that they don't have a real issue with it, but they need to make it safe before they put it back in. And they've seen some problems. Hmm. Now, some people would argue that these problems have been happening for a while and finally they've pulled up their socks. But it seems as though maybe they dialed it up just a tiny bit and it kind of went a bit cray cray. So they shut it all down to review. And see, I'm kicking myself now because I didn't read the terms and I don't know what age is. Like, is this an 18 plus thing or? Well, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at. One here, which looks and it says right. it's available in the app store for ages twelve plus. And there you go. So I don't know what others are, but it's yeah. I guess that means more people can download it, isn't it? It's a difficult tightrope which they're walking. And along. there are all these different versions of GPT or generative pre-trained transformers, and they're all being tweaked in their own way by different people. And there's absolutely no guidelines yet. Like it's frightening i've just found one where you can chat with your own live elf you can (laughs) talk to a real elf (laughs) (laughs) rule 34 graham rule 34 our sponsor collide has some big news if you're an octa user then you can get your entire fleet to 100 percent compliance How? If a device isn't compliant, the user can't log into your cloud apps until they fix the problem. It's that simple. Collide patches one of the major holes in zero trust architecture, device compliance. Without Collide, IT struggles to solve basic problems like keeping everyone's OS and browser up to date. Insecure devices are logging into your company's apps, but there's nothing there to stop them. Collide is the only device trust solution that enforces compliance as part of authentication, and it's built to work seamlessly with Okta. The moment Collide's agents detect a problem, it alerts the user and gives them instructions to fix it. If they don't fix the problem within a set time, they're blocked. Collide's method means fewer support tickets, less frustration, and most importantly, 100% fleet compliance. Want to learn more? Of course you do. Visit Kalai.com slash smashing. That's Kalai.com slash smashing. And thanks to Collide for sponsoring the show. Our friends at Bitwarden have been busy this month adding some fab new features to their open source password management solution. Now, did you know that you can log into Bitwarden using a secondary device instead of your master password? Well, now you do. (laughs) Logging in with a device is a passwordless approach to authentication. It removes the need to enter your master password by sending authentication requests to other devices you're currently logged into for approval. With login for device, it can be initiated on the web vault, browser extension, desktop app, mobile app, and you can approve access on your mobile and desktop app version of Bitwarden. Very, very cool. And the Bitwarden team has hardened the security of its vaults, protecting new vaults with 600,000 iterations by default. And of course, existing accounts can also update themselves to the same level. These and many other great security features are incorporated all the time into Bitwarden, keeping your password secure from hackers. Learn more, try Bitwarden for yourself at bitwarden.com slash smashing. That's bitwarden.com slash smashing. Secure Envoy. Say that while the cloud might be the best choice for companies focused on reducing the cost of managing applications, some companies are opting out of public cloud and sticking to on-premise and private cloud. Why? One reason is regulatory compliance. Moving data to the cloud means you are reliant on the security and access control provided by the cloud supplier. Organizations that prefer to keep their data on premise in a private cloud where they have sole access and control should perhaps look to secure Envoy for on-premise MFA. 
Another reason is data privacy legislation in different countries can lead to differing data protection requirements. And for companies with a multi-country presence, they know there are different regulations in different countries that affect how we store and back up data. Secure Envoy's on-premise MFA solution could be exactly the solution you need to meet your MFA requirements. Learn more at smashingsecurity.com forward slash Secure Envoy. And thanks to Secure Envoy for sponsoring the show. And welcome back. And you join us at our favourite part of the show, the part of the show that we like to call Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week is the part of the show where everyone chooses something like could be a funny story, a book that they've read, a TV show, a movie, a record, a podcast, a website, or an app. Whatever they wish. It doesn't have to be security related necessarily. Hope it's not. Better not be. Well, my pick of the week this week is not security related. Um, let's talk about space. Space is big. <laughs> that's, 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 uh, that's, that's, again, very insightful you are today. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't believe how vastly, hugely, mind bogglingly big it is. You may think it's a long way down to the road to the chemists, but that's just peanuts compared to space. And if you want to get some idea as to just how big things can be, Mm -hmm. That is my pick of the week this week, because I'm sure, Carol, you are familiar with the work of Randall Munro, better known as the artist behind XKCD, yeah, the comic. Mm -hmm. Now, I was having a think about, I was thinking, you know, what a wonderful body of work he's produced over the years. And I remember one of my very favourite ones was something called Click and drag, which came out, can you believe, back in 2012. I remember, I wonder if you remember this one. I will put a link in the show notes because this wasn't just a comic strip. This was an experience. <laughs> so with, okay. with click and drag, you're looking at, a, you're looking at like four, uh, little windows on the comic, four panels, I suppose you call them on the comic strip. And you start off with your little stick man, uh, floating around, hanging from a balloon above a landscape. And you then click and drag on the landscape as you would do with a mouse on, on your computer or with your finger, drag it on your, uh, smartphone device, for instance. And what you realize is that you are only looking at a tiny part of the landscape. And you can move left and right, up and down, and you can slowly explore <laughs> the landscape. And the thing is, I, I can hear you, Crow. I can hear you No, I'm doing it already. right now. I'm doing it. You I'm do, doing it. Doing it's it? very cute. Actually, I was, I was actually being charmed by some of the drawings in it. It is a huge landscape of unexpected things. You can spend hours looking into this. And I was very impressed as to how much effort must have been put in by XKCD producing this particular piece of work. Now, if you read up more about this, there is a great website called Explain XKCD, which gives you a sort of, it's like a wiki, really, of uh, descriptions of different XKCD comics. Sometimes they're explaining the nerdiness behind the joke, if you haven't quite got right. the joke. In this particular case, they're getting they're waxing lyrical about the artistic merit of this particular cartoon and what it means to the human psyche, how rather like when you're living through life or when you're traveling, you just travel bit by bit. You're not seeing the full picture all at once because you can't see the full picture with this particular landscape. You have to click and drag. And you can, as I say, spend hours finding little Easter eggs and all sorts of loveliness and sad bits and romantic bits and funny jokes as you go further and further. If, however, you've got no patience at all, I'm also going to link into a zoomable version that's much easier to navigate, but you will be cheating if you do that and if you want to go and... <laughs> you will not be at... cheating. It'll just save you if you've got RSI uh, in your wrist yeah, from having perhaps. to scroll around. But I this, yeah. this has always struck me as one of the loveliest, most pointless but beautiful things on the internet, much better than that Elf Chat app. I was just talking about, um, or in the apps you've been. <laughs> Don't you think it's just a bit like there. life, Graham? You know, you never it get is. the full picture, it isn't is. it? Just it's a bit deep for you. It's black and white. It's a bit of a drag, <laughs> but occasionally something will click, and that is why this particular XKCD comic, which I'll link to in the show notes, is my pick of the week. Number one 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 zero. Yes, Crow. What's your pick of the week? Well. <sighs> Do I have a pick of the week? It may be a pickish oh. 
of the week. A, a, a sort nitpick? of pick of the week. A nitpick? I don't know. A nose pick. I don't think I loved it. I liked it, mm. right? And I think some people will adore mm. it. Rotten Tomatoes, it's, it's a series. I'll be telling you in a second. Mm. But they wax lyrical okay. about it. So I'm going to risk okay. it. Okay, all right, go for it. So show on Disney Plus called Only Murders in the Building. Ah, I've heard about this. I haven't seen it. Right. Okay. For those that haven't, basically you have three strangers, you know, well-known. Steve Martin, yep. the glorious Martin Short, and cute as a button, Selena Gomez, right? They all share an obsession with true crime and podcasts. <laughs> well, every podcast is a true crime podcast, including this one that people listen to. <laughs> well, just wait. Dun, dun, dun. Um and anyways, they suddenly, they love it all in the same building mm. and they suddenly find themselves wrapped up in a bit of a murder. Mm. In, they're trying to figure out who in the building has committed this murder. And they start a true crime pod to record their search and finding. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. so I have an issue with the premise, right? Because would you do that? Would you go after your neighbors accusing them of murder? You know, week on week, jumping from suspect to suspect, <laughs> explaining why they are the murderer, and the next week going, oh, no, we got it wrong. Oh, is that what happened? Sorry, so guys. People, so the yes. actual real murderer could be listening to the podcast and yes. realise that the suspects are being narrowed down and they're getting closer and closer to me. Yes. Isn't it always the janitor anyway, and he would have got away with it if it weren't for those pesky kids? Uh, not this time. Uh. So... So on the on the plus side, it's cozy. Someone used that word describing it. I think that's the good word. You know, it has a little bit of like old Woody Allen, you know, because it, okay. it, it's yeah. kind of very New York and a bit jazzy. And, yeah, you know, uh, it deals with the darker side of things with a skip in its step. So, you know, same, a bit Woody Allen-esque, you know, like you have this horror thing happening, but the way they yeah. react makes it light. It's just a bit of slapstick, yeah. cute lines. But I don't know. The characters are for me are like exaggerated. A bit like a comic strip, you know, like the bad guy is really bad and, you know, looks bad mm. and has big bushy eyebrows and tiny little eyes. And <laughs> Carry on. I don't know. But hey, look, I wasn't a big fan of Ted Danson's The Good Place and Maria loved it. And I think I have a similar gripe about this one, but I like and trust Maria. So, yeah, I don't like The Good Place, but I do know people who adore it. Mm -hmm. it, it and people that you like, right, and respect. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. me too. I'll give, I'll give Only Murders in the Building a try, though. I'm, I mean, I'm intrigued by I, I, my My problem is sometimes I start watching these TV shows and I think, OK, I've seen three or four episodes. I kind of get it now. It's like, are we going anywhere new or is it just going to be more of the it's same? It's a bit murder, she wrote. Like, it kind of just meanders oh, well, along wonderful. at a nice, comfy, a nice, comfortable pace. I think you'll be able to keep up. That's what I like. I like a nice, gentle TV program like Midsummer exactly. Murders, something like exactly. that. Something that's not going to offend. There you are, much. lovely. So, so that's my pickish of the week. Only murders in the building. It's on Disney Plus, or I'm sure wherever you stream your stuff. Fantastic. Well, Carol, that just about wraps up the show for this week. Um, folks can follow us on Twitter at Smash Insecurity. No G. Twitter won't last ever G. Uh, we don't have a verified Twitter account and we won't be buying Twitter blue. Smash Insecurity is also on Mastodon. Go and find us up there. And also check out the Smash Insecurity subreddit. And don't forget to ensure you never miss another episode. Follow Smash Insecurity in your favourite podcast app, such as Overcast, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And huge, huge thank you to our episode sponsors, Bitwarden, Collide, and Secure Envoy. And of course, to our wonderful Patreon community. It's thanks to them all that this show is free. And as always, for episode show notes, sponsorship info, guest list, and the entire back catalog of more than 209 episodes, check out Smashing... Check out Smashing... <laughs> 209? 309? 309 episodes. <laughs> check out SmashingSecurity.com. <laughs> Until next time, cheerio, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.